Hey, what's up, folks? Maddie Wills back with another episode of Wellbeing Wednesday with Maddie Wills, of course, brought to you by the fine folks over at Metro Health. Today, we'll be talking about behavioral health and weight management with the one and only Dr. Stacy Caldwell. So let's bring her into the fold here in just a second. So yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, Dr. Caldwell, how are you doing today? Good. Hi there. So first of all, thank you so much for taking some time out of your, you know, your busy schedule. All of you all are, you know, very, you have very important jobs. So we, we don't like to pull you away from those too much, but we do enjoy having these conversations with you guys just because you, you provide such valuable insight to our listeners and our followers. Uh, and, and, you know, I know we're going to get right into that today as well. As I just mentioned, we'll be talking about behavioral health and weight management. So before we kind of dive into our questions, why don't you just go ahead and give everybody a little bit of your bio, you know, your journey into Metro and, and, and some of your uh, passions within that field. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, um, so I, I would, I guess, kind of big picture start by saying over the past uh, 28 years, a 28 year career, um, I've worked with individuals across the lifespan. Um, so I actually kind of done have done a little bit of work in early intervention, working with infants and babies, um, and then moved into work in a school based setting where I've worked with children, adolescents. Uh, and also uh, some time in a college-based setting, working with college-age students. And then um, here in my last 10 years at Metro Health, I've been working with adults um, and just kind of doing evaluations and counseling or therapy. Um, and I will say that in my current role, um, what I do is that I assist with pre-surgical evaluations for people who are interested in, in um, weight loss surgery. Um, gotcha. So that's currently what I do. Perfect. Well, then you are the perfect person for us to talk to about what we're about to dive into. So without further ado, we'll just kind of hop in. Um, so question number one, Dr. Caldwell, is what is obesity and how many people are affected by it? Yeah. Well, so obesity is now it considered a chronic and progressive disease, and it didn't used to be that way. Um, however, again, the, the American Medical Association um, has made a statement whereby they recognize obesity to be a chronic disease. And what that means is that, you know, it's not something that's going to necessarily resolve very quickly. And sometimes if it does seem to resolve, um, it can sort of what we say, like flare up at times. And so it's something that needs to be managed or controlled over time. And um, typically, you know, again, when we think about chronic disease, um, a good example might be uh, the condition of high blood pressure or hypertension, right? So oftentimes high hypertension um, needs to be controlled or managed using, using certain medical guidelines um, and guidance. So that might include, you know, the use of medications, changes to um, certain lifestyle um, things such as, you know, getting more exercise or, or watching salt intake. And so again, obesity is much the same ways. Um, I will also share that um, what, what places someone into that category that we call obesity or obese um, is a BMI or body mass index or th of 30 or more. Mm -hmm. um, and body mass in index is basically a calculation that um, takes into account both height and weight. And then I believe you asked me about uh, prevalence or, or or the amount of people in the U.S. Right. population. Yeah, so really it's about 42% of adults in the U.S. and about 20% of adolescents and children have obesity. Oh, that, that, I got to admit, that number is kind of shockingly high, in my opinion. 42%, I mean, it's, it's almost every other person uh, here is, is considered to be obese. I, I, I didn't expect that. Um, so what is the connection between obesity and mental health issues such as depression and anxiety? Hmm. Okay. Good question. So, um, 
I will say that, you know, for both men and women, um, studies have shown that if a, if the body mass index or the BMI is about 40%, 40% or more, then they're more likely to have clinical depression. And um, there has been like a stronger connection that they found between depression and obesity with women versus men. Um, and so about 14% or one in seven women um, with obesity also have the condition of depression. So in terms of how depression kind of factors into or contributes to obesity, um, first of all, you know, depression comes with certain signs and symptoms. And so um, when a person is depressed, they may experience symptoms such as um, an increased appetite or a tendency to want to sleep more or withdraw from other people. Um, and when these symptoms occur, this begins to interfere with a person's ability to keep up with health behaviors that they need to kind of maintain a healthy weight. Um, you know, it may in impact also, you know, their energy level and motivation, which is going to uh, then again, further affect their ability to kind of get out or kind of get up and get going and get in the activity that they might need. Mm. Um, in terms of um, anxiety, then um, anxiety just in and of itself is the most common mental health condition um, that's diagnosed here in the U.S. So more people are diagnosed with anxiety actually than depression or in comparison to depression. Um, and so that being said, um, anxiety is uh, also the most common um, emotional or mental health condition um, that's that's found to exist within people with severe obesity. Mm. And very similar to depression, it comes with certain signs and symptoms. And so with anxiety, a person might experience an increasing appetite. They might experience certain cravings and um, this can lead to weight gain. Um, also, sometimes people with anxiety may have difficulty with like feeling some nervousness, uh, trouble being around large groups of people um, in settings that might be too stimulating or too noisy. And so again, this, this can just interfere with a person's ability to just kind of get out, get around people, seek out support, um, you know, get the physical activity that they need. Right. It's kind of amazing how many conversations I had or have uh, with with you guys over at Metro that just uh, I don't want to put put it all in one box, but it, it's amazing how many times exercise or increased movement would just help kind of whatever we're talking about. Um, but uh, what is weight stigma or weight or weight bias? I'm sorry. Um, and what are some of the harmful effects it has on people struggling with losing weight? Yeah, so I can I can kind of speak to both of those because they are sure. stigma and bias are very similar. Um, so in terms of just kind of defining terms, um, weight stigma is a sense of of maybe shame or this sense of being devalued because of one's weight. And then um, weight bias refers to uh, negative stereotypes that can happen um, and or negative stereotypes about um a person who's affected by overweight or obesity. And of course, we know when there is bias, then that can, can further lead to um, discrimination or prejudice in certain, certain ways and certain arenas. Um, some examples of stereotypes that have been very common for people with overweight and obesity um, have been sort of these ideas that, you know, the person won't follow medical adv advice, for example, or that the person is lazy and lacks, you know, self-determination or self-control, or that they, they may not be um, very successful at achieving certain life goals. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of an, an example of what those negative stereotypes kind of sound like. 
Um, now, people who experience weight bias or uh, you know weight stigma do have an increased risk of sort of having certain emotional con consequences or kind of fallout from that, just because of you know how they are sometimes treated or some of the uh, inequities that they may experience. Uh, yeah. This, yeah. So, so I would also say that this bias can occur. Um, in, you know, across settings. So it can occur in educational settings, in work settings, in um, even in healthcare settings. Um, in, in schools, they have found that students with um, excess weight might face bullying or rejection by peers. And studies have shown that this can happen as early as preschool. Wow. Yep. And then in the workplace, um, people with excess weight um, are also less likely to be higher than thinner applicants, even when they have the same qualifications. Um, because there may be, you know, again, these negative stereotypes or ideas, you know, that the person may be less productive or less competent in some way. So, so those are some of the things that can kind of happen in different settings. And then, like I said, uh, you know, unfortunately, it, it, it can occur in, in certain healthcare settings. Um, and when this happens, unfortunately, this is something that can kind of cause a person to just shy away from asking certain questions about their health, right? Because they, they may feel embarrassed or right. um, it may cause them to just even not come back for a follow-up appointment and get the health care that they really need. Wow. Wow. That's a, uh, that, that's a lot to, uh, to kind of take in when you, when you start talking about some of those biases, because, you know, you don't, they might not be top of mind for everybody. And, and, you know, as you're talking, I'm just thinking about, you know, when I was a kid and, you know, you can think back of certain students who we probably didn't really know what they were going through mentally, uh, just because of some of the challenges they may have had, um, with their weight. So, Definitely something to, to keep in mind for all of us and just how we, you know, project, you know, whatever, whether it's a joke or even the, the things that we may not think about when you said, you know, may not be considered for certain jobs or certain things like that. Like that's 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 kind of wild. Wow. So uh, what services does Metro Health provide uh, related to obesity? Sure. Um, you know, so again, just to kind of recap, you know, there there are many people out there who have probably tried to lose weight repeatedly, and um, they may, you know, come to a place where they realize they need some support with the process. Um, and so Metro Health does have, you know, a multidisciplinary team of um, trained providers who are specifically trained um, in weight management. And we can give patients a range of options, um, a range of treatment options. And so some of those um, include both, you know, non-surgical as well as surgical options. Uh, one of the programs that we offer is called a STRIDES program, and it is uh, a diabetes management program. It happens in like a group support setting, and it can help people with losing weight and just kind of, you know, getting into more practical, healthy um, lifestyle changes long term. Um, we have other non-surgical options as well through our weight management clinic. And um, through that program or that clinic, um, patients can come in and see a medical provider and really get an individualized plan that's kind of tailored specifically to their unique circumstances um, in order to help them kind of achieve a healthier lifestyle. And then, of course, we have a, a surgical option, um, which is bariatric surgery or weight loss surgery. And this is very much a proven method um, to help people lose weight and improve their health, especially when some of these other options may have failed or not worked out so well. Um, so that's important to know that that option is available if needed and with, you know, the the guidance of your healthcare team if that's something that a person feels they need. Um, and then additionally, I would just add that we have a, a range of uh, behavioral health care providers who can help people kind of um, with what we call this mind-body connection, right? So we know that um, 
you know, we are a whole being, right? So, you know, we are a physical being. Um, we have an emotional aspect to ourselves, a mental aspect, a spiritual aspect, and it's all very much interconnected, right? And so, um, you know, when something goes wrong with one aspect of our being, it can impact those other things. So today we kind of talked about how, you know, this this idea of overweight or obesity can impact our, our mental health or our emotions. Um, and so again, that's just, it's important to know that um, when looking for a behavioral health provider that the person kind of understands, you know, this, this mind body connection and in that we are this whole being and we need to kind of look at multiple aspects of how to, um, you know, treat a situation or treat a condition. Um, so yeah, that's, that is what we offer at behavior at Metro health. And that is a perfect uh, response. Uh, she is the expert. She's Dr. Stacy Caldwell. I'm just the host. I'm Maddie Wills. Of course, this is Wellbeing Wednesday with Maddie Wills. Uh, now, listen, if you have obesity and are interested in getting help to stay healthy, of course, you can call 216-778-7433. Again, that's 216-778-7433. Or visit our website at Metro Health. Uh, Dr. Caldwell, thank you so much for taking some time out of your extremely busy day and providing all of us with um, this really tremendous information. And, you know, Metro Health is just a one-stop shop for anything that you need in terms of your uh, medical or, you know, mental health or, and, and everything in between. So we really appreciate you guys, and we're, we're looking forward to having more conversations in the future. Thank you. That's another episode of Wellbeing Wednesday. We'll be back soon uh, with another expert. See you then.